Have you been exploring your spirituality and learning more about yourself? And now you're ready to take bold, positive action. Are you seeking clarity about what is really blocking you from your greatest potential? Do you feel like you're so close to a breakthrough, but you can't figure out why you continue to feel stuck at the same level? Join us now for Real Talk with Joyce and Jennifer, two transformational coaches who are eager to share all they've learned over the many years they've each been working with clients, helping them create the life they want. Joyce and Jennifer both have extensive, diverse backgrounds in the art of conscious transformation, and they are here to help you. So tune in now for the insight and tools you need to consciously live, work, and play so that you can live the life you most deeply long to experience. Hi, Joyce here. Welcome to Real Talk with Joyce and Jennifer. I'm a transformational coach, life purpose facilitator, mind-body teacher, who guides clients to live their most wild, courageous, and authentic lives. Hey, Gen everyone. It's Jennifer, and I'm a transformational coach, facilitator, and consultant, which means I transform the mentality of leaders so that their entire staff and corporate culture can shift toward higher purpose. But most importantly, I'm a mom. You know, well, Jennifer, we have all experienced quite an emotional, gut-wrenching, powerful week of Hurricane Emma that left, you know, a deadly storm and trail of flooding and destruction from Cuba to the Carolinas. And this on the tail end of a recent Houston flooding, Mexico's earthquake, and the fires burning out west. Um, you know, this brought up a lot of emotions for me on how powerful Mother Nature is and the lessons that continue to come from these disasters. It also brings up the suffering of loss and grief that people have to go through, as well as the goodness and the caring of the people who care for our safety. Yes, and it is so hard to watch this level of suffering. We here in Atlanta are all so grateful that all we dealt with was a temporary loss of power and some trees down and school closings as a result. And, and for those of you listening today, we, we might want to make note that if, uh, if we have any technical issues or if we're <laughs> hard to listen to, we have a little bit of uh, after effect here with our connection, but hopefully we'll get through this flawlessly. But you know, Joyce, there are so many amazing people who are taking their skills and their passion right to the disaster, volunteers and employees alike. I have a former client and Facebook friend that shared her journey as a relief volunteer, and it's one of my favorite things about social media. We get to be inspired by those stories that we may not otherwise know about. So whether you are a disaster relief aide or a utilities tech crew member out there, we want to give you a special shout out and say thank you. And Joyce, unfortunately, I believe the craziness of this weather might only be the beginning. Well, it looks like that, Jennifer. It looks like this is not the end, but right in the middle, maybe. So, you know, recently, I, around this time of all the disasters, I was reading an article in Indian Country News by a writer. Um, he was an indigenous writer um, who was talking about his own prophecies that it's told that we're now at the crossroads, that we are either we either unite spiritually as a global nation or we're faced with chaos, disasters, disease and tears from our relatives eyes. And it sure seems like that's what we're in right now. We're also, you know, he said, we are the only species that is destroying the source of life, meaning Mother Earth, in the name of power, mineral resources, and ownership of land, using chemicals and methods of warfare that are doing irreversible damage as Mother Earth is becoming tired and cannot sustain any more impacts of war or disaster. Yeah, it is a travesty. And sadly, you know, this has been going on for many, many years, not just in our generation. And of course, we are proud of our freedom and the ability to live the American dream. We love what we stand for in that ideal here in the States. But too often, it's become a dream of, it was a dream of opportunity that's been misconstrued as opportunism. And, you know, it's one of the biggest reasons why I started JMAC Consulting. It was to help business leaders learn how to do the right thing in a way that is healthy and mm. prosperous for all, the business itself, 
its employees, its customers, its leaders, and so on. And given everything you said, Joyce, it also pains me to think that my teenage children have only known us at war. They are relatively desensitized to the atrocities because it's all they've known. My oldest was born in 2002, my youngest in 2004, and we've virtually been at war their entire lives. I know. You know, also the indigenous writer said that our vision is for the people of all continents, regardless of their beliefs in the creator, to come together as one at their sacred sites to pray and meditate and commune with one another. This promotes an energy shift to heal our mother earth and achieve a universal consciousness toward attaining peace. You know, I do know that there were thousands of people praying for Hurricane Emma, including myself and you, to reduce the impact and strength it had on the U.S. And as bad as it was, it could have been a lot worse. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's amazing to think that Irma was the size of the state of Texas. I mean, mm. 400 miles. Yeah. Um, but the one and only beautiful thing about hardship and disaster is its unique ability to bring people together in prayer and community. And everywhere we turn right now, organizations are raising money for relief. Volunteers are pouring in from everywhere to help. Whole families and communities are praying together on others' behalf. It's truly beautiful to see us all come together again, especially in a year when we've been so deeply divided. Mm, absolutely. So Jennifer, this takes us on to our topic for the radio show today, understanding your divine partnership. And what a crucial partnership it is, if I may add. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> You know, I'd like to just start our dialogue or conversation on spirituality. What does it mean to be spiritual? Because, you know, I've asked people when, you know, when they come in to see me for the first time, do you have a spiritual practice? Do you, what do you believe spiritually? Because it sets the tone of really how I'm going to work with them about what their belief system is. So spirituality is a highly personal and intimate experience of our deeper nature. It should not be confused with dogma and doctrine of religion. It does not say what you should or should not do. You know, your highest self determines your spiritual path. Each person's spiritual path is unlike anyone else's path. There is no spiritual path that is better than anyone else's. Exactly. And yet, so many who practice a religion are spiritual and yet negatively and overtly judgmental of others' paths. Typically, if that other person chooses a different religion, which seems counterintuitive to me and the actual art of spirituality. <laughs> me too. Um, yeah, so spirituality for me is being willing to allow the divine, a power greater than myself, to enter my life and guide me along the way. And over the years that I've been doing this, I've developed a deeper, loving, trusting relationship with my higher self that I trust to help guide me on my spiritual path in the world through these times right now. You know, it is a partnership, a co-partnership with a conscious source that knows more about me and what I need than I could ever imagine in my tiny little brain compared to the intelligence of the divine. So uh, this is uh, some thoughts from Dr. Joe Dispenza, who you I've brought up several times in here that I love his work and what he's doing on the planet. So he says the divine is an intelligence, a consciousness and an awareness. And since consciousness is awareness and awareness is paying attention and paying attention is being present it is always present with you. The divine is always present with you if you acknowledge it. Yes, and I love that. You know, it's such an interesting and awesome perspective. I, myself, grew up in a traditional Irish Catholic home, and we definitely believed in a God that was far wiser than we could fathom, but it was traditional, and there was very little discussion about spirituality as a concept. It was in my early adulthood when I studied many religions and spiritual belief systems in college and beyond, 
which helped to expand this understanding to include an idea that my divine partnership is essential to what my well-being and my ability to thrive. And it is undoubtedly based in love, love of self, love of humanity, love of God, love of the earth, love of all its inhabitants and beings, basically a love of all that is. And as hmm. simple as that sounds, it was a total game changer for the quality of my life. You know, uh, I totally agree with that, but you, I'm sure you have experienced this. But if you ask a room full of people their definition of spirituality, you'll get many different descriptions. That it's nature, that it's goddess, that it's God, that it's consciousness, that it's mother, father, divine, all that is, on and on and on. So many people today throw around words that represent spirit. You see it in ad copy, on clothes, on cars. Nice, but that's not really, that's not really spirituality. Being spiritual does not mean um, eating gluten-free, never eating meat, doing yoga, repeating a mantra, reading self help books, being a vegetarian. While all these choices are awesome, in my estimation, they don't equate to being spiritual. You know, it's a lot more. These are all healthy things to do, but they are not the definition of spirituality. You know, you're already a spiritual being that is either from birth, that is either choosing to live a spiritual life or not. Here's an example of what I'm just talking about. I heard a story uh, this last week from a friend who was eating at an outside festival that served meat as well as vegetarian food. And a group of angry vegetarians prote protesting eating meat surrounded their table, yelling mean comments at the group. This was not the best way to get the message across to the people. As well intended as they were for their cause, they were, they, there was nothing spiritual about this approach. So maybe a little kindness uh, would be a better way to get this message across. So everything is not spiritual that looks like it is. <laughs> Right. What an amazing story. We uh, yeah. must have been a spectacle. So let's yeah. continue talking about spirituality when we return. Okay. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Have you or someone you love ever experienced a major loss? The kind of loss so cataclysmic that it divided life into before and after. The death of a beloved person or pet, the loss of a job, a health challenge, can leave us feeling empty, lost, alone, wondering if we'll ever feel joy again. Loss is universal. Grief is part of the human condition. But in our modern world, we've lost the ability to understand, share, and integrate our grief. We're expected to grieve privately and quickly get over it. This November 3rd through 5th, the Atlanta Grief and Loss Center will be hosting a retreat that will allow you to fully feel, integrate, and catalyze your grief. Our retreat is called Heartbroken Open, Grief as a Sacred Path to Renewal and Rebirth. If you are grieving, or if you work with clients who are grieving, you'll find more information about this powerful retreat at atlantagriefandlosscenter.com slash retreats, or call 404-881-1322. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Listen and imagine. It takes five seconds to send a text, and for those five seconds, you're driving blind. 
Life is worth more than a text. Stay alive. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. So welcome back. Joyce was just telling us about a group of protesters who were (laughs) vegetarians and very angry at meat-eating attendees of a festival. Uh, And, you know, we can laugh at at, at this kind of a spectacle, but we see it all the time. You know, it it really, we're living in an era of a lot of protests, actually. And and, um, and so you have one group claiming to do the right thing while negatively and sometimes aggressively judging others who don't do it, whatever it is, the same way. And, you know, <clears throat> quite honestly, I'm, I'm not going to be on a soapbox with this because I look back at my life and I think, yeah, I, I was probably one of those a few times. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have lost my way and, uh, and found, found myself again. But, um, but it's not really about us judging the judger, right? It's really about us recognizing what's inside of ourselves that we see in others that's making us angry in that moment. Um, You know, I've often told clients as they are learning to transform their lives into healthier, happier ones, that there's no real right or wrong. It's what's right for you that matters. And that means that it's more about intent. What is your intent? Is it pure? Are we going for the win-win here? Are we standing up for good and justice in the right way for the right reasons so that even those that we oppose, we hope for the best on their behalf. Um, One of my favorite people on the planet is a vegan, and and your story reminds me of her because she chose to be vegan because of the atrocities that she has read about and witnessed committed against animals um, in order to serve the consumer demands. And, you know, she goes about her veganism without ever judging others. She simply makes her own higher choice. It is what is absolutely right for her. And she is one of the most beautiful souls I know. And I often tell her that I aspire to be more like her every day (laughs) in her peaceful demeanor as she chooses her higher way. (laughs) Yeah. What a different experience that is. Two different people really impassioned about the same thing, but it's just how they live it out. How, you know, Mm -hmm. how is their life expressing it? So, so let's move to, uh, I think some, we're going to move a little bit deeper now and I'm going to, so we can look at some of the questions that um, I'm going to ask that might help people to get more clarity on spirituality. So these are some of the questions, and you can uh, listen to these again or take them down and and answer them for yourself. Um, So the first one is, do you have a personal connection with the deeper rhythms of your life and the earth? How do you relate to the mystery of your life? How do you think that happens? What offers you inspiration and hope? Do you feel connected to a higher power and intelligence? These questions require us to go deep within ourselves for the answers. These questions help us to answer what it means to really be spiritual. At its essence, spirituality is a measure of how loving you are, how unconditionally accepting you are towards yourself and others. You know, this is uh, uh, spirituality is a living practice. You don't need to go to Italy or India or Bali to find your spirituality. Although places, these places are wonderful, and I certainly have loved Bali. Um, but it's right here in front of you, right now. It's in every person you meet, every breath you take. It's everywhere you go. Though you can't see it, you certainly can't buy it, and you won't find it in a book. None of these things matter if you aren't loving. Loving yourself and others, to me, is the key to embracing a spiritual life. Yes, 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 Joyce. I could not agree with you more. (laughs) And it sounds so simple, so simplistic. Yet we all know how hard this can be. We love our children, but we often criticize them. We love our friends, but we often chastise them. We love our neighbors, but when election season rolls around, we often turn on them. (laughs) (laughs) Negative and overt judgment is the bane of our existence and the antithesis of true spirituality. We are human. We err. 
but we also forgive. I think we would be a far more peaceful planet if we learned how to genuinely and proactively think and act in more loving ways. But as you say, Joyce, we must love ourselves. And I've come to believe that few people, adults, truly do love themselves completely. There are millions of adults roaming the planet today, I would speculate, that see themselves through the eyes of the critical parent and not mm through the eyes of the loving soul inside themselves. So true. I just have to share this moment. It came, flashed into my brain of Louise Hay and this uh, teaching she's, her, she's very famous for was going to the mirror and looking in the mirror at your own eyes and telling yourself that you love you, that you're wonderful, that you're beautiful. And that is extremely hard for people to do. Because mm -hmm. something just happens when you look at yourself at that level. And I've done it and I've burst into tears. Mm -hmm. So that is a powerful tool to do. I mean, you can find out if you love yourself, just ask yourself that and see what comes back. So let's talk a little bit about what are the benefits of living a spiritual life after all. So what spirituality does for my life is to help me and also others better navigate our lives so that the cycle of crisis to stability isn't as bumpy. So when we live in a way that are when we live in a ways that are truly spiritual, there are fewer struggles and there is less suffering. Now that doesn't mean that there's no suffering or no difficulty, but it does seem to me that we can ride the waves of crisis with more surrender. And in that way, we allow more understanding, kindness, and compassion to carry us through the hard times that we're in right now. So a question is, are you experiencing the divine in your daily life now? You know, a central element uh, in creating a spiritual path to me is a connection with something that allows us to transcend the everyday mundane aspects of our lives. This connection allows us to gain perspective and distance from our human drama and crisis that allows us to feel a sense uh, of the profound in our life. We just can't, we can't read about it though or listen to others talk about it. We actually have to live it. We have to directly experience it. Yes, we do. And I, I actually think that so much of this is based on our ability to exercise faith in addition to love. Um, you know, when I'm with a client who feels stuck, I nudge them and say, faith is an action. And after I get the deer in the headlights look, <laughs> I further explain <laughs> that we can't just think our way into a more peaceful and prosperous life. We must exercise this part of ourselves. We must learn how to surrender, learn how to let go, learn how to trust in a higher power. We must learn how to relinquish control and refrain from that negative judgment and choose a path of greater love and joy. We simply must learn how to believe in something greater than what meets the eye. This doesn't mean that we have to take a physical action every time. It simply means that we have to consciously shift our addiction to fear into a commitment to love. Mm -hmm. So, I was thinking about these experiences that we all share. I'm sure everybody's had one of these that I'm going to mention, but we often don't see them as like magical. And so I'm going to share these and just remember what you felt as I read these. Um, a moment of intense beauty. Where have you been where it's so beautiful? You're just, ah, oh, it's, oh, it's wonderful. Engaging in a spiritual ceremony, experiencing a synchronicity that's unexplainable, having a lucid dream, falling in love, listening to an extraordinary piece of music, the birth of a child, the healing of yourself or someone who was sub chronically severely ill that lived, a shamanic experience, a book that changed your life, the beauty of the ocean, and learning to meditate. So these moments are open to us without having to do anything other than to be open and sensitive and to look around. These are experiences that allow us to transcend our everyday reality and recognize that we are part of something 
much larger. For a few minutes, we begin to forget our fears, our judgments, our negative thoughts, and our worries. You begin to surrender and experience the love and peace of experiencing a higher vibration. Yes, and you know, Joyce, what a list you've created there. It's, you know, I, I, I think when I hear you say each one of those things, it can take me to a memory and a moment, each one of mm -hmm. them that was completely yeah. magical. And you know, to further add to that sense of magic, which is something that I embrace every day in my divine connection, um, I, I collect coins when they're on the ground. I collect feathers when I see them on the ground. I, um, I study the, uh, you know, the totem concept of what does each animal, you know, as a messenger on, in the universe, what do they represent? So when they come on my path, I feel like it's a special message. You know, it's also magical mm. if you really just step back and look at the magnificence of how we all are operating together. Uh, in this divine space, and um, and so I I just when I when you're in a moment like that, you can't help but cherish the simplest yet most powerful uh, seconds in that moment of your life. And and in fact, just talking about it makes me want to get up and take a walk in the fresh air after the show's over <laughs> instead of jumping on my computer to respond to email. <laughs> mm -hmm. It just makes me want to stop right now and count every single blessing I have, which there are many, many. Many, I know. And if you lock them in like that, you can actually remember them. Because one of my favorites is all at it's the top of a memory that was like, oh my God, this is like really it. I was teaching a class uh, in Costa Rica and I was just in this beautiful place looking down at the valley and I was with wonderful women who were transforming their life and I stopped going, I stopped right on the the path where I was walking and I just felt it for a minute like, my God, how does it get any better than this? I mean, like, that's it. So I think just acknowledging things that are really right there in front of us that are very special in our life is very powerful to have more of those times. So. Let's talk a little bit about how we develop a personal relationship with the divine. When we get right back, that's where we'll pick up. Sounds great to me. your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Change and growth are part of natural life and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Ohm Times Experts program. With Ohm Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.ohmtimes.com. Depleted by the rat race? Depressed by the attitudes of the human race? The book Honor explains why and how to transform your life from confusion and heartache to one that you most authentically desire. Join Ohm Times Radio host Jennifer McKenna Weinbaum as she takes you on her journey from her darkest period to her happiest and healthiest life. Entertaining, enlightening, honor will help you find and maintain the love and light in your own life. Visit www.universalabundance.com to pre-order your copy. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living, a chance to see new hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. Listen, my life changed because someone was there to get me to use drugs. No one can understand, People think that having someone who will listen makes it better. I need help. I'm listening. I need help. I think that having someone who will listen makes it better. People understand. 
No one can get me to use drugs. My life changed because someone was there to listen. Go to heretolisten.com for tips and tools to turn addiction around. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back. Welcome back. So we're going to start again on how do we develop a personal relationship with the divine. So uh, like Dr. Dispenza has said in his teachings, like any relationship you want to develop, you have to choose to have the relationship. As we know, when you place your attention in where you, where you place your attention, it brings up your energy. And whatever or wherever you place your attention and energy only expands. So if you put your attention and energy on a relationship with the divine, then as your attention on it expands, there should be more of it intelligence available to you in your life. So to deepen your relationship with the divine, you need to understand the non-physical or invisible world. This allows you to understand how to work with a higher vibration to create a life more in alignment with what you desire. This world is experienced only through awareness. In other words, you can only become conscious of it. You have to learn to match your energy with that of the divine, an energy that is loving, peaceful, and mindful. You have to allow yourself to surrender, to listen you know, to the small, peaceful voice inside of you. You have to desire to have passion, to connect with this intelligence that knows more than you will ever know about your purpose, passion, and desires. It also knows how to help you attract and achieve what you desire for your life, whether that's health, relationships, career, or money, or something else. Yes, and uh, you know, to that to that point, it, it also comes to quote Oprah. You know, she always says, "What well, you focus on expands." <laughs> so we want to yep. make sure that we're focusing on what we yeah. really want. <laughs> but right. again, you know, uh, I'd like to also go back again and, and mention the importance of exercising faith in general as a means to develop a relationship with the divine. So. Um, if any of my clients are listening out there, I'm, I have to go ahead and apologize because I've told this so many times that it's kind of embarrassing. But, um, you know, if you jump out of a seven-story building, which way are you going to go, up or down? Of course you're going to go down. Why? Because of gravity. But can you touch gravity? Can you feel it? Can you see it? No. So how then do you know it exists? How have you learned to honor and trust it? It's the same thing with faith. You'll never be able to see it or tangibly touch it, but we are governed by certain laws, and I like to think of faith as the law of manifestation. You can't manifest what you want unless you exercise faith at some level. It's just as sound as the law of gravity, in my opinion. And we do have to exercise our faith muscle, just as we do our physical muscles. Taking a leap of faith isn't always a leap, it just feels like one. It's because it defies the control needs of our brains. There is a control freak inside of all of us at varying levels. It, faith, it defies the needs of our ego. So our intellect is forever trying to maintain control, which oftentimes only sabotages our ability to create the experience we actually want. Most of us were conditioned along the lines of Murphy's Law, whatever can go wrong will, Faith <laughs> requires us to defy that thought, but again, it is an action. Trusting that things will go right is an exercise, and that muscle inside of every one of us must be developed. Absolutely. I know that one well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can't say you want a life of abundance and beauty and then walk around with thoughts of lack, scarcity, fear, and doubt. You can't connect with this intelligence in this low negative energy field. Remember, you have free will. You can choose to live life any way that you want to. The divine's not going to come and get you. It's your choice until you're ready. You know, above all else, you have to want it. You have to be passionate about it. Just as all these elements are required, required to have a relationship with another human being, so too are they required to have a relationship with the divine. Yes, and as Einstein once said, 
we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. <laughs> so right. let's, let's talk about co-creation as a concept. You know, what is it exactly? And to me, it's the understanding that we are in this together with the divine. It is a partnership. It's the partnership that requires faith. So basically, in this particular relationship between you and your higher power, you'll always take the first step. Your higher power will then come in to support you. But your higher power, for most, this is God. For some, it could be Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, or the Great Spirit, among many others. But this higher power of your choice is not going to rescue you. It's not likened to the knight in shining armor. <laughs> it's about exercising faith first. And so that mm -hmm. is just another paradigm shift. It sure is. And there's so many people in the world that seem to think they don't have to do much of anything. And they just ask the divine to come in and take care of them and create these things for them. And it's just simply not the way it goes. So, um, yes, faith is a powerful force. And it, it isn't definitely, it, it definitely isn't religion. It's an important part of a spiritual practice, trusting that we are not alone and understanding that there is great power and higher intelligence in partnership with us that is invaluable. It can be life-changing and absolutely life-enhancing. Yes, and I just want to clarify that none of our message is to imply that religion is bad. I think no. that religion is just a choice of how you exercise uh, your you know, faith muscle or your belief system. But, um, you know, and often we are raised in religious homes and we're and, and some of some of those uh, were taught to fear God, to be at quote unquote his mercy. And to me, that's just a, such a sad proposition because fear is actually the antithesis, excuse me, <laughs> the antithesis of love. <laughs> So mm -hmm. we beg God instead of co-create with God as our most loving, highest form of real power. Not the type of power we've been taught, which is the abuse of power. So just as I would ask a client, I ask you, our listeners, to experiment with this. Just study cause and effect. Don't take my word for it. If you truly learn the art of letting go or going with the flow, you will see very clearly how this works. You'll begin to live a more spiritual life and understand its power and its benefits. You'll develop a deeper relationship with your divine higher power. And you'll begin to see how you are co-creating a higher quality of life. Yes, uh, Jennifer, I, so I think of all the crisis and traumas that each of us have experienced over the years. And I can recall how many times we would say to each other, we would have never gotten through this without faith in a higher power, never. We would have gotten lost in the grief, the fear, even the despair. But as we exercised faith, we had the courage and the conviction to keep moving forward, to believe in a higher purpose in the situation and to use it to improve our lives. Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> I yeah. would never have made it through without my faith. No, me either. <laughs> uh, so, but you know, sometimes the co-creation experience is just pure magic. And it brings us something even greater than we desired. And other times, that co-creation experience can just be a flat-out miracle. And it defies everything we believed about the situation. Because our beliefs tend to be based in the impossible, not based on what is possible. And then other times, that divine partnership can show you clearly that what you want is not good for you at all and therefore will not happen. In that case, if you exercise faith and trust that that is true, something far more extraordinary will be waiting in the wings to present itself to you, but not until you come to peace with letting go of what you originally wanted. And you know, Joyce, my daughter just went through this experience. Um, she wanted the lead in the musical in her summer theater camp pretty badly. Uh, and she was called mm. back four times for it. But in the end, she didn't get it. And I told her the entire time to not force it, to trust that if she doesn't get it, something better is right around the corner. And sure enough, two months later, she landed the lead in her middle school musical, which is five times the role of her original desire. 
It's the wow. biggest lead she's ever auditioned for, and she could not mm. be more excited and humbled by it. So, um, you know, it's just so fun. I talk about my kids, my clients, but I have to say I love what I do, and these experiences, are, experiences with others are so meaningful to me that I can't help but, but share them. Um, and so, Joyce, let's pull this all together. Tell us how all of what we've talked about today ties in to our past programs on life purpose and transforming your life. Well, Jennifer, um, I think the information we shared on how to begin on our previous shows, how to begin to find your higher purpose, and our conversations on what is required to transform or make change in your life, and today's conversation includes most of the elements you need to firmly step onto your spiritual path if you are wanting to but just didn't know how to do that. If you just listen to the three of these, I think you're going to get a lot of information to be willing to test out some things and to try this. So, you know, only you can determine how to walk on your spiritual path. How slow or fast is strictly up to you. You can get support from a spiritual group, from a transformational retreat, from, a con from conscious travel, or from teacher. Ultimately, it's up to you. This is a solo journey that only you know how to create. So when I began my spiritual journey, I was actually um, had moved to New York City, and I, I had dabbled a little bit in stuff here, but not much. Um, so I was living in the city, and I had an intention of finding a teacher or a group to begin to learn and engage uh, my spiritual path more fully. I clearly knew that I needed it. So through all these twists and turns of circumstance, uh, you know, and synchronicity, um, which is just amazing, I met a friend on the street who invited me to meet his teacher. We'll be back and I'll finish that story. <laughs> Sounds great. Best of the conscious minds in the world. Home Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living, a chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. Chris, you're not acting like a grown-up in our relationship. M2, M2. There's your comic book collection, the race car bed. I'm young at heart, but I put money into my 401k every paycheck. I'm taking control over my financial life, and that feels pretty grown up to me. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. Are those footy pajamas? This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. So welcome, welcome back. back, Joyce. Joyce, you were yeah. telling us a story that I'm, I am I would really like to hear. You were saying that you yeah. were in New York City and you were, mm -hmm. you know, embarking on your spiritual journey without probably even knowing it and that yeah. you met a friend on the street. So tell us more. What happened? Yeah. So I just happened to be walking, you know, synchronicity just happened to be walking, turned the corner and there was somebody that I knew that was actually a pretty new friend. But I said, where are you off to? And he said, oh, I'm going to my Tuesday night spiritual group. So I said, wow, tell me about that. So he did. And then 
um, I said, well, you know, I'd really like to go. This sounds like something I could, I'm looking for, and I'd really, I'd really like to meet the teacher. So um, a week later, <clears throat> I went. He invited me to come to sort of an open house for the beginning of September, where everybody was coming in for the rest of the year, and he, she chose who she was going to work with. She had a lot of, of classes then. So uh, I went to that lecture, and um, I remember entering... Um, she lived sort of down in the village. And as I entered her beautiful space, it was filled with all the things that I love, like visually, uh, you know, water fountains and crystals and all this stuff that I was really into, that I still am. Um, and she, I sat down and she started to speak. And I knew immediately that this teacher was exactly what I needed for my spiritual growth. You know, I was just adamant that I wanted to be included in this group and that I was going to get in. And, of course, I was because that was my intention. So I attended this Tuesday night spiritual group for seven years. I only missed two classes in all that time. This class gave me the grounding that I needed to heal my life from a lot of old wounds to learn about uh, just a variety of spiritual practices and to actually do them in the class and just expand beyond what I even knew was possible in a class. And part of it was using visualization and dreaming. And, you know, I realized later that after I left New York that I had put in place the vision for my own healing center that I opened in 1996 when I moved back to Atlanta. So all of that helped me to move into a dream that, I didn't have certainly when I went to New York City. So that's my dream. And I, I love, love that. It. I love that. Love that class. Yes. It, you know, it's we always have these great profound moments when we know we're having a spiritual awakening or we're having an epiphany. And, mm -hmm. and oh my gosh, I can't begin to describe what my spiritual evolution and my divine partnership has meant to me and how it's enhanced my life experience over the years. Um, I know many years ago in my late 20s, uh, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And for those of you who may not know what that is, uh, it's a condition that affects your joints and it causes severe chronic fatigue and pain. Uh, and at the time, I was a young nonprofit executive and my career was everything to me. <laughs> my ambition was high and it fueled my workaholism. Uh, mm -hmm. And I had adopted over the years that mind over matter mentality and philosophy and mm -hmm. I completely ignored the needs of my body until my body showed me who was boss. And that wasn't the first time in my life. Um, but I healed, I healed my body by adopting a more spiritual philosophy, which at that time I can attribute to two major influencers, yoga and the wisdom of the natives, the indigenous uh, people of our country. It was a transformational time in my life and, and I'm unspeakably powerful. But I couldn't just read about it or go to a yoga class and hope for the best. I had to consciously incorporate a new state of mind in order to learn how to heal my body and honor my spirit. It was a process. And of course, to this day, it continues to be. You know, I'm, I feel as though I'm always spiritually evolving. There's no mm -hmm. on off switch to living a spiritual life when you're in divine partnership. It becomes a way of life. And then we are asked nearly every day by life to practice it over mm -hmm. and over and get really good at honing those skills. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> those skills of faith and keeping ourselves at peace in times of trouble. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, we are all totally in charge and responsible for our spiritual evolution. We just can't say this enough that like every other part of your life, your spiritual life needs nourishment and encouragement to remain alive and growing. If not, it just kind of dwindles away and it doesn't have the power that it can have. So let's look at some of the ways to do this. Here's like three that, you know, you can consider that I, I certainly do have considered that are real important in my life. One was developing an ongoing relationship with your deeper essence. So to stay in touch with your deeper rhythms of your life, you need to take time each day to connect in to your inner self or whatever you relate to, to be higher self. It could be 
higher self. It could be God. It could be trusted source. It could be mother, father. It doesn't matter what you call it or what faith you come from. It matters that you're connected to something outside of yourself. Meditation is one of the best ways to quiet your mind so that you can attune to your deeper self. So the second one is aligning your thoughts with your higher purpose. So one of the most powerful ways to stay aligned is to get quiet and let your mind focus on the end results of what you desire for your life. So you see it as already done. See it in front of you in space where you created. See the details around the image. See the results done. An example might be to see yourself in your new home. See the surroundings. Look outside at the trees and flowers. See who's in the house with you. See yourself thrilled that you now have the home of your dreams. See yourself living in the home already. Align your thoughts, emotions, and visions. This is really a process that all great athletes and people who are, are really high achievers do. They already see themselves having it, whatever they want. You have to help. You have to tell the universe what it is you want. This is what I want. You don't have to worry about the details because the details will mess you up. You just see it, see it, see it. Know that that house is out there for you. Know that that partner is out there for you. Know that career is out there for you. You don't know, need to know one detail about how you meet the right person that gives you that job or gives you the mortgage for your house. You don't know. Actually, you don't want to know the details because it messes you up to try to plan, micro manage what the divine's trying to do for you. So the third is finding a spiritual support system. So staying on a spiritual path is easier around others who are also on a spiritual path. It inspires and encourages you to deeper your own spiritual path. You can find groups in churches and temples and bookstores, or you can create your own support group in your home. You invite people who are also on their own spiritual path to join you on a monthly, in a monthly group to connect in. As Jennifer and I have done, we, we, mm -hmm. when we met, we were both, we came into a spiritual group that I think was important uh, for the six or seven of us that was in that group, we were in there for several years and it was a very powerful group. So these are just a few of the many ways that uh, we will discuss in our upcoming shows on how to really co-create a world that you want by partnering with a divine. Yes, and, and Joyce, those are awesome steps and insights. And and just for the sake of... Uh of repetition and being able to retain the information, I want to repeat them once more for our listeners. Mm -hmm. So the three steps are one, develop an ongoing relationship with your deeper essence. Two, align your thoughts with your higher purpose. Three, find a spiritual support system. And I just, you know, I, I'd, I'd love to add to what you've already said, Joyce, and that is that, mm -hmm. you know, there are a lot of spiritual teachers that talk about the divinity within right? And we're talking about um, this magnificent divine intelligence that is bigger than us. But it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter where your belief system comes into play around um, the existence of it, where it is housed, what it is, what we want to call it, whether it's God or, or higher power or any of the other names that I mentioned. It's really about understanding when the human mind gets in the way, when the mm -hmm. ego gets in the way, and whether or not you believe that you are worthy of being um, a child of God, part of the divinity, being able to access into that partnership, however you want to look at it, I think that we go back to that basic of the love of self and understanding your own greatness does not lie in your ego or your ability. Your greatness is really... Mm -hmm your ability to trust and to love and to have faith in that divine presence. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Joyce, it's really great insight that you've provided, and, and I, I hope that listeners do find it very helpful. And so as we begin to close the show, I do want to just add one more Einstein quote that embodies our message <laughs> today. <laughs> I mean, after all, the guy was a genius, right? So, yes, um, he was. He, he also <laughs> said... Everyone who is seriously involved in the pursuit of science becomes convinced that a spirit is manifest in the laws of the universe. 
a spirit vastly superior to that of man, and one in the face of which we, with our modest powers, must feel humble. Which, the way he puts this, embodies a sense of grace to me. It doesn't dismiss our greatness as humans. It just simply encourages us to lay down our egos and embrace the divine greatness that is right there for each of us to access, Mm -hmm. as you have said, Joyce. Beautiful. So, anything else, Jennifer, you want to share in our closing, getting close to closing here? I think that, you know, I'd... I'd, um, I would love to hear from our listeners. I think one of the things we haven't asked Mm -hmm. before is for people to connect with us. To Mm -hmm. uh, you're welcome to email us um, at info at joyceandjennifer.com or email each of us individually. We're probably Mm -hmm. actually Mm -hmm. more likely to respond that way. (laughs) Joyce, if you want to mention your email address, absolutely, I will. Yeah, Yeah. mine is jennifer at jmatconsulting.com. And mine is joycedillon.com. We thank you for being with us today. Yes, we want to hear from you. Send your questions. Let us know what you want to hear. We know your time is valuable, and we appreciate that you've chosen to spend it with us. Yes, and follow us on Facebook. We'll continue to provide more inspirational articles and quotes. So thanks again for listening. See ya. Bye. Thank you.